right, A440F came in a box and uh, somebody's already started rebuilding it in the process of uh, being brought over here they broke the cable so we'll be repairing that uh, see if we can get this out of here Ten millimeter socket ought to do it. Okay, okay Tech Pack Fits All makes a kit that will repair this. The uh, tricky part's going to be getting this shaved down flush we don't need these sticking out so you know however you can do it uh, if you got uh, end cutters that you can clip that down you can do it that way you can use a um, cut off wheel in your die grinder as long as you don't nick this cable and then uh, to get the kit on there we also got to I'm on slide it we got to cut this band off of here. So we got to get this rubber up. And we'll worry about that when we get there. We got to cut this band off. And then sometimes these cables don't want to come out. Like I don't think this one's going to come out. Uh, we're going to have to slice this and cut this off and do it without nicking our cable here so that's one extra part they're gonna have to buy already uh, I'm just gonna leave this connector in there there's no need to really take it out center support to get it out we got to take these bolts out millimeters on that I don't trust well here we go I guess a doozy of a storm going right now looks like they only put two of them in there so center support should come out and pull our drum out we're going to have to take the piston out of this drum there's a race here take this drum apart make sure everything's okay in there make sure we're not ring cut right there and should should come out some scratches in the case here it may have been forced in so this may be fun getting the back end apart so I'll worry about that in a little bit let's take a look at her pump pump seems to be okay I would be very careful about changing out the pump bushing on this thing. 
it all looks okay, I would run it again. A lot of these Toyotas are line board, older Toyotas. And if you go to try to change this bushing out, it may never fit it up properly again. So if you change this bushing out and it does not want to fit on your torque converter, you're going to be replacing the pump because it's been line board and you're never going to get it right. Pretty decent looking bushings all around there. Let's see, we're going to take this uh, port apart. There's a race on each side. Make sure we're not ring grooved. Looks to be okay. Neutral switch. Looks like the old clutches were pretty burnt. Let's see what we got going on here. Hopefully hadn't touched the valve body. That's my main concern. The bushings all look really, really nice. A tad bit of wear right there, but I think it'll be fine. Planetary. Looks okay. Ring gear looks okay. Make sure this surface is not pitted right here. This is an open face bearing ride right there. Kind of like that, except for smaller. Our flange. Hopefully the governor has not been touched either. governor is seized so I'm gonna have to get that squared away let's see what we got here I don't think the valve body's been touched this has had some water in it at one time be careful that these tubes are not missing I like to fall out. This drum apart. Looks like it has not been touched yet. We do have some rust we're going to have to clean up. Alright. Looks like we can just put in what they want, other than we got to buy that kit for the cable, assuming I can get that apart without screwing something up. So I'll try to get that apart and then uh, we'll see you on the rebuild. Okay, I'm going to try to repair this vent that got broke off and they broke this in too, although I don't think I need to do anything here because there's enough that sticks down into the case. I don't think I need to worry about it. I'm just going to silicone it into place. It should stay in there. Uh, this end, they said they could not find it. So I don't know what's happened to it in the meantime. So I got a vacuum connector that's 
real close to the same size of what this should be. I know what it should be because I got another one in here at the same time, so I measured it. Then I just get a roll pin that fits down inside there, and this one fit really snug. I was beginning to think it might split it. It was that snug, but I got it pressed into there, and what I did is I measure, eyeball it, with how far it's, it's going to be in there. It's going to be in there about yay far. I just don't want it blocking this hole off. So I can uh, go in here and grind this down if I want to. I don't think I'm going to. I need I need to have enough meat on there that this is going to have something to sit in. So measure the size of the roll pin. You want to be a few thousand smaller. Now I got. Um, I think I'm going to be way too small, but we're going to give it a shot. I don't have the exact drill bit that I need, but I've fixed a lot of parts doing stuff like this. I can use, you can use super, super glue. This one I'm gonna use JB Weld because I wanna make sure that this is sealed up all the way around in this uh, little area right here so nothing gets down inside there. And I'm gonna point this to the, the bottom so that it has less of a chance of getting anything in there. But uh, I'm going to show you what, what we're going to do here. So right now, see if I can do this without putting it in a vise. I really should put it in a vise. But I don't have a camera mount over there. quite a burr on it. <coughs> I may have to go take this over to the vise. See if I can do this without doing that. Just, just about perfect. Maybe loosen that up just a tad bit more if I can. All right, I think that's going to be about, about perfect. So then I'm just going to mix up some JB Weld.
good enough. Get a little bit down on here. And we'll get it in there. You want somewhere around two thousandths interference fit if you can get it. All right, I think we're good. I did not pay attention to where that groove was. Yes, I should have, but I think we'll be okay. Get this down in there. May have to mix up a little bit more. Get us a good bead on there. I think that'd be good enough. All right, we'll let that sit and dry. And then uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do the throttle cable because that part came in and we'll get that done. Okay, I wish I could get a little bit closer but I can't. Um, I got all those parts on my other bench that are built and I don't want to get any of this debris in there. And this is the closest mount I have to the table over here so it is a little ways away but you should be able to get a gist of what we're doing we want to get this rubber peeled back off of here as far as we can get it out of our way see if I can get it to fold over I can't get it to slide down Come on now. Stay. All right, that may be enough. So what we've got to do right here, just going to cut through that metal band. got these little pieces right here that we're going to have to take care of. We can try end cutters. Uh, I find a lot of times what I'd, I'll do is I'll just bend this over and I'll just take this and I'll see if I can keep from slinging this all over the camera. Let 
Now just keep moving that around to where I keep it from the cable. to split this down and keep this cable off of there again and I really do recommend that you put this in a vise because it's gonna turn on you so just uh, keep the cable away and slice it down and I'll be back when I get that done Okay, sometimes you can, when you cut it, you can get it enough that it'll come out through the slot. Other times I've had to uh, go ahead and just cut it in both sides and split it in half. I think I got just a little bit further to go. Not quite all the way through. Okay. Now, see if it'll come out of there. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Okay, I'm gonna have to I'm going to have to split that also. Here's our number from uh, WED is T57497. The kit number from Tech Pack is 67999. Does any of the Toyotas? So you can get this, it's got a new o-ring on it. It's got a rubber seal in here and it kind of acts as a crimping ferrule. So what you do is you take your nut and you put it on there. You take your rubber piece and you slide it on your cable. And you take your plastic end push it all the way up until it uh, that's another reason why you want it's quite a ways down you want to make damn sure that you are bottomed out you want it all the way down then you just take two wrenches and you tighten this down and that is all there is to it and then you just pop it into the case okay we'll see how this goes pointed away from me so we got the spring we got a bent ends one goes down inside the, the hole right there and your pin has to go through this one right there. Got our park mechanism. 
spring got to go on the front side of that. Doing this pointed away from me may be a little bit of fun. Get up there, here we go. Point it in, out. All the way down. Okay. Our actuator is on there like so. Two 12 millimeters. Twenty-one foot-pounds, and my torque wrench is not working right. The tool guy is supposed to be here today and get him to check it one more time. May have to either send it in or get me another one. Maybe they'll take it in as trade. Millimeter here. I think I said that. Okay, there's no need to take this bearing out. Uh, I got shims that go around the governor here and the output shaft. I'll have to show that when we get there. Okay. Eight check balls, 250 thousandths. There. 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 Oh, I think that one's wrong. Let me double check this. I think that one's wrong. Okay, that's correct. That's not right. It goes over here. Put you some grease to hold those in. get the next section and we have this plate there's two of them one has a long leg one has a short leg the long leg goes in this spot right here come on now why ain't you going in The short leg goes in this spot right here. Go ahead and put you some grease on there because they are going to come out. Especially when you put the cam on here. Alright, the cam assembly looks like that. It does have a clip that you gotta pull the e-clip off then this pin comes out it's got a flat spot that sits right there two little legs sit there to keep it in place you need to put spring tension on this thing the spring is on that little hook back there and then it goes through right there on this cam like I said puts you some tension on the spring before you put this down on there
then we have 10 millimeters that have uh, Torx heads in the inside of there. Go ahead and stick your bolt in here to line that up. If you're going to use a 10 millimeter to uh, work on these, you're going to need a shallow wall or you're not going to be able to get in there. Okay, and we can take that back out. We have a filter, it's got a raised side to it that faces up it sits down here but we're going to, have to put that in the separator plate first we have a barrel spring and a ball it's going to fall out so just put you some grease in there to keep it in place a 374 thousandths i believe was the ball okay here's our bolts for that let me get the next section and we'll be back. Okay, this one here can bite you if you don't know. There is a sleeve that goes down inside of here. And there's a roll pin that holds it in place. This roll pin is more likely going to fall out when you pull this plate off to take your valve body out. So make sure that you take this roll pin out before and then also make sure that you get it back in there and the sleeve oriented the way it goes before you go assembling it back together otherwise that sleeve is going to move out this valve goes with the big end out spring in and it's kind of a pain to get in there and it may not want to stay you may have to push it in and put something in to keep it in place while you put the rest of this in that in there to keep that in place. We have this valve in our sleeve. There's a dot on the sleeve. It needs to be facing up. The roll pin that holds this in place goes right there and goes through here. It will just push all the way through. So if you push on this and drop that in, it's probably going to fall all the way through. went all the way through all right just make sure you get it back up there and that uh, you don't lose that pin there then our manual valve goes in we have another barrel shaped spring another check ball spring check valve Okay, our separator plate goes on. All 
our, our filter that we had. Make sure it sits down in that right there. Make sure your check ball does not fall out. It needs to sit right there. We have They all have washers on them. Some will fall off, some won't. One inch, 724, goes right here. One inch, 351 for these. inch 179 for here. Just leave those loose. I don't put um, valve body gaskets on this part. Uh, Depending on how I feel about the rest of them, I may or may not. Right, our valve body goes on. We have a tube that goes on here. down bracket. Now I don't take these off right here. I don't take these off. They do have the same size bolts. Uh, 665. Point 665. Where did I put the other bolt? roll pin I made. There it is. Yeah, that uh, roll pin fell out that I was telling you about. Apparently on the uh, other one that came to me in a box and uh, I like to well I never did find it. I had to finally make a, a pin for it. Okay, we have uh, four bolts that are one inch 569. We have two bolts that are one inch 355. Maybe three, I think. Yeah, three. Let's see. What was this? Yeah, three of them. Okay, we have the detent that goes up here. We need a 10 millimeter to uh, kind of help get that in place, but I just leave it loose until I get it on the transmission so I can line it up in the rooster comb. One inch 878. I had two washers on there. One other bolt must be missing it. So 
So I just leave that loose. Two quarter inch balls, one goes there, one goes there. Uh, he has the gaskets on here, so I'm just gonna use them. Uh, make sure that you get the right one on the right side. Make sure that you got the cutouts for your check balls. You don't use the one that doesn't have the cutout. So make sure your gaskets are right. And if you're gonna be replacing gaskets on your Toyotas, um, match every single stinking hole. All right, we'll start here, work our way up, I guess. Two inch 393. Same. Same. Two inch 556. Nine hundred and three thousandths. Two inch three ninety one. Same. Nine hundred thousandths. Two inch three eighty seven. Two inch three ninety eight. 2 inch 391, 900, 2 inch 556, 900, and these last two should be 900. Yep. Okay, and I guess we can go ahead and put this plate on. This one has the gaskets on it also. There is a filter up inside of there. Yeah, these two should be 900. This one. Two inch three ninety two. Same. Okay. Now we can tighten everything up. Make sure our plate is lined up properly, and then go ahead and tighten everything down. Uh, the only thing left before we put this on the transmission is this solenoid has an O-ring on it. it goes here. Here's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all this down. And then I'm gonna change camera angles because this is gonna to be too low. And we'll put the valve body on the transmission. Hopefully we're recording this time. So on our governor, we have this set up here. Going in this hole right here. And then we have this E clip or snap ring short end of the taper up. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Here's the snap ring groove right there. Make sure that you do get all the way into it. Then once you do, turn that opening away from the opening. There we go. And on the back side here, the washer has a recess and a raise. The raise goes in. The recess goes here. Heat clip goes on. sure that the clip goes down in that recess there. Then on this one here, have this valve, this spring. 
just wait. It goes up inside of here. We have this weight here. Goes on like this. Heat clip here. Make sure it goes up inside of there again. Okay, there is a filter. Open in would face out. Goes in right there. I don't put them in. have our gasket our governor we're just gonna hand tighten a couple of these so it doesn't totally flop around the rest we're gonna leave loose till we get the governor on the output shaft so we make sure everything's centered and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, let me get the valve body. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I gotta put the sealing rings on. I'm gonna go ahead and redo the valve body since I got a little bit of free time today. So we don't have to see the fish eye. Okay, butt cut. You need to put grease on these ring lands to hold the ceiling rings by all means do it if they are spread out you know kind of like that I just take them and twist them Okay, let me get the valve body. Okay, for your ceiling rings that go on here, it's not a bad idea to take them and put them on the drum that they're going to fit into. And the reason I say this is because I've run into situations where they don't fit properly. So you want to make sure that they do. So like this one is going to fit on this drum. So just take your ceiling ring, put it together, hook and loop. And make sure that when you put your ceiling rings down in there, that they do fit properly. So if we get fairly close to this. Okay, what you want to do is one, when it's going in there, you want to make sure it's fairly tight. I don't know how well it's going to show up. But the gap between your rings, you're allowed about, I think it's nine thousandths. So you want to make sure it's damn near closed. And that it doesn't just drop in there. Or that it's too tight and then you're, it's going to be just as bad. So. You're actually not going to get it in there. You're going to break it when, it when you go try putting a support in. Okay, so these two fit. Like I say, they're hook and loop, so... I just... Uh, kind of hard to get an angle on this. I don't know if I can do it backwards. I just hold one side in, push up and around.
Okay, on the back side, there's going to be a race here. This side goes in. Same way up here, there's another one that goes in just the same. You got these cutouts right here. Your piston has to fit into those. System. Now this uh, unit came in from a different shop and they've had trouble. It actually went to an engine shop and uh, Toyota Guru that knows everything about Toyotas put a different crank in than what actually this is what I think really went down this is not what I've been told this is what I figured out on my own they supposedly rebuilt this engine they didn't rebuild this engine they bought a junkyard unit the reason I know that they bought the junkyard unit is that there's two brackets that go from the transmission up to the block. The bolt holes for those uh, brackets are not in the engine. So it's not even, the, they didn't rebuild it because the, those bolt holes would still be there. And they are not. Okay, see how that's a little small? You can take this O-ring and stretch it out so anyway uh, it's got the wrong crank in it so therefore the torque converter that's in it is now wrong and they keep wiping out pumps pumps and torque converters so I think we got it straightened out now we get the right pilot on it right torque converter should be okay now. So what happened on this unit is wiped out the converter. Luckily it did not wipe the pump out this time. Um, but it had so much metal in there it, it seized every valve damn near in the valve body. So I had a hell of a time with that and you know I, forget, I didn't think about it. I should have filmed doing that valve body also because I think the other one uh, is going to be that fish eyed looking thing but uh, you're just going to have to put up with that because I'm not going to take that valve body back apart so we got the return spring and My snap ring. All right, we want to put the opening away from an opening, so just pick you a, a good spot. And then just push your snap ring in. And these will love to pop back out on you, so you may have to put, you know, something to hold it in and as you work it around. <clears throat> Alright, then make sure that you are all the way up. in that groove. Okay, you can put your clutches in right now and check your clearance. That's what I suggest you do rather than getting it down into the unit and then having to get down inside there. 
should check it. So uh, on here, there's three O-rings. And there's metal guides that the O-ring goes around. I'm not sure if those guides are in there. Just dig your O-ring out. And let's see if we can get one out. I'm not going to work too hard at trying to get it out of there. Well, I'm just going to show it to you. Hopefully it shows up on camera. You want to lube the crap out of this support and the case and make sure that there's no burrs, no scratches or anything on here. If you need be, sand this down with some fine sandpaper. Your case also. You want this to slide super easy as it gets stuck and you're going to wish you never got born. And this has supposedly been rebuilt, and uh, I don't think so. The ceiling rings weren't changed, and the clutches, some, or most of the clutches have been changed. It's like a, to, what we would refer to in the industry as flat rated. I think they just threw some new clutches in it. Called it good. Uh, this rubber is as hard as a rock. These ceiling rings have not been changed. The gaskets on the back of the case, the accumulators, they, that was not, that hadn't been touched. Because those gaskets get like concrete on there. They're very difficult to clean off of there. If they had been changed, it wouldn't have been that difficult to get them off. Okay, I guess we can go ahead and do the other support while we're at it. Then we'll go off to the drums. See, these ceiling rings have not been changed either. Now this uh, gear you do not need to take out. There is a snap ring right here if you want to take it out. The snap ring is going to hold up our rear clutch drum. It does not have a bearing that goes in between here. So we want to go ahead and check our ceiling rings again. Good. Super hard as a rock. I mean, that should just spring back. Yeah, that one's a little loose again. Just give it a little stretch.
We got the same deal. We got these raised areas that have to go in the recessed areas. Again, snap ring again, just find you a spot where the opening is away from the opening and just push it in again. Clear it, this one's gonna be a little more difficult than the other one, I think. Change your O-rings again. Side, we have this washer. And so, since we got this out, let's we'll go ahead and do our front drum. Which piston is our front one? This one. Make sure this check ball is free. And that it should rattle around. There we go. And then make sure it seals also. I've never had one that didn't seal, but you, know, you want to make sure it seals. You can put some fluid on it, let it sit there. Actually, this way. I'm going to make sure it holds fluid. that up. I'm going to do all these drums at one time. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do because I don't have a camera over there. Put your return spring on. Uh, snap ring. I think it's over there. Any snap rings the same way. You want short end of your taper. 
every snap ring up. And I guess we'll go ahead and keep this up here where it's a little bit better view. Maybe. It's overdrive directs. Overdrive direct piston. trouble there. Alright, I'll have to see if I got the outer one. I got the inner one. That's a little big. There we go. Let me see if I can find the outer seal. Spring cage on that. Alright, rear clutch. And our piston. They all have check balls in them. You all need to make sure that all of them are are free. we get that on there's another race that goes on top of this one okay on our planet we have steel washer it goes on each side tabs got to line up in the little notches I just take a uh, razor blade and cut that or you can get a scrab in here and pop that out. It's a solid ring so it kind of has to be reshaped once you get it, the new one on there. It deforms it just a little bit. I just slide it on there. Kind of mash it down a little bit and you can also take it put it in the back of the drum and let it sit there and spin it around and it it'll resize it okay on the back side is a bearing front side is another bearing have this planet it's got a washer in here there's no need to take this apart unless that washer is destroyed i've never had one that was unless the planet is destroyed and then you're replacing it all anyway uh, there's should be let's see what we got here 
Should be a side that not shiny, but this one's got both sides shiny. This one's a little better looking, so we're going to put that against the bearing. There's no bearing on this side. Your ring gear goes in. If you want to get this off, you just got to take it off. Where's our opening? There's a snap ring right there. Pinch those together and it'll slide off. Got your output shaft. Nothing on the back side. Snap ring. Put your planet on the front. Okay, I guess so let me find that uh, o-ring get the drums together then we'll put the clutches in okay the uh, rear clutch you can check your clearance really easily uh, the forward clutch is not so much so they put new clutches in here except for one of the forward clutches so I'm gonna put this new one over here so I don't have to it's a lot more work to get into the forward drum than it is this drum. So, <clears throat> yes, I know that I have to replace it. it. Has not showed up yet. I don't know about this place that they're doing this for. They are some kind of slow, slower molasses. Uh, so I'm just going to stick it in there so I can. All I have to do is pop the snap ring out, change that top clutch, and I'm, I'm ready to go. Clearance is right there where it should be, but I'm going to have to check it again when I get the new one. On the forward clutch, <coughs> I suggest that you leave this hub out until you check your clearance. We have a cushion plate, the dish goes down. I can tell you from experience where that uh, clutch is coming up just underneath that ridge right there it's gonna it's gonna be about perfect just go ahead and stick your um, snapper in if you wanted to put a gauge on it you're gonna have to find a way to get down in there that's perfect Okay, easiest way is just dump all this back out. And we have another race. We have another bearing. And put all of this back in there. have another bearing open face out 
All right, we have adjustment shim. We have this race. And this bearing. Just above that, there's ceiling ring. It's butt cut. It goes together just like so. You need to put grease in there to hold that in place. By all means, do so. You do not want it pooching out. You don't want to cut it as you put the support in. And it's going in right there. All right, this one's pooching out pretty good. I think I'm gonna have to put some grease in there. It can be a little bit fun getting it down in there. Let's try this again. Stretched out just enough to get it over the where it goes. It helps keep from deforming it. Okay, I think we're all right. When you go to put your support in, if it doesn't slide easily, don't try to bang it in there. Overdrive directs. Side of here it's captured just make sure it's in good shape all right the planet's going to turn counterclockwise and lock clockwise we have this bearing on the back side you have this bearing goes on the front side on our ring gear we have another butt cut ceiling ring that goes back here you need to put grease on it again I have this bearing. Okay. Um, guess we're waiting on our clutch. Let's see how much time we got left. I guess we can do our pump. When you go to put the planet on, you got this sprag that's going to go on the outside here. All right, planet should turn clockwise, lock counterclockwise when this is in the case. So we know that this side needs to go up.
okay on your pump bushings uh, do not take that pump bushing out unless you just absolutely have to because if you do you're probably going to be replacing your pump these pumps were line board and if your bushing is out of spec plan on replacing this you can try to replace the bushing before you buy a pump but odds are when you put that bushing in there and you try to fit this on your torque converter it's going to be too tight if it's too tight it is a line board pump and you will be buying a pump you'll never make that bushing work okay pump gears don't matter which direction they go They do have dowel pins in there, so you don't have to worry about lining it up. You just got to make sure that you point it the right direction. I'm on getting a hole. We have ceiling rings again up here. Go ahead and fit them into your overdrive direct drum. They are hook and loop. Your stator bushings you can change if you want to, if they need to be. Uh, they're, they're not going to be like the pump bushing itself. And we got a race on the top, and we got an O-ring. I already uh, fit the front seal in. I used the prep um, Arbor Press to put them in. The bolts. Have sixes on them like that. And then there's I think two tens. All right, the two tens are one inch nine thousandths. All right. I got to go dig out a different torque wrench. Apparently this one's not working right, and I've been waiting for the tool guy to show up to check it, and he's just not showing up. So let me dig all that out and get the torque specs. Okay, uh, we're going to redo this because the last tranny um, camera changed its settings for some reason and the video it's not the greatest looking it looks kind of weird kind of looks like you're looking through a peephole uh, as far as in the center is fine but if you look at the peripheral it kind of screws with your, your head a little bit but i figure since i got this other one in here i'll just go ahead and redo it luckily i had one in here so the C1 accumulator, forward accumulator, whatever you want to call it, 
spring is 3.549 0 0.697 0 0.104 spring goes in first you can lube these up if you want to two o-rings on here the plate has two gaskets on it in your kit you're probably gonna get two different sets there's two different uh, plates and Everything so it's slightly different size why they did that. I don't know this gasket goes on this side And you got your separator plate and you got this gasket on this side The little tab faces over here you Got four 10 millimeter bolts They are I guess I should turn the fan on Hopefully we didn't get flagged for that. And 10 millimeters are Here we have this gasket, our plate, we have three 10 millimeters that are 0.792 and then these are the only place that these go so you don't really need to measure them. They are Phillips head countersunk. I have to build this tranny out of a box because I can't get them to send me the kit. I don't know what the problem is, but I got to get this thing off my bench. So I think I got most everything that I need. Um, on this piston back here, we have O-rings. You're not going to be able to see this because I got to go over to the foot press to put this piston in. And we have the return spring. Look at your snap ring. There's a taper to the tips, short end up. And of course that's going to go on the other side. 69 inch pounds on these bolts. I'll be back when I get that in. Let's see if we got enough battery to get this done. <coughs> Try to get some of this done before we have to turn that fan on. Be a little quieter. Put your planted assembly down in there. We have a cushion plate. And then steels and clutches. The clutches are 68 thousandths.
snapper. See if we can scoot that over just a little bit. Yeah, right, we'll leave it right there. Let's scoot over out. All right, our sprag assembly. Oh, let me check my clearance. It's really good. Bring again. And let's move that back a little bit. Right there be good. Do want to make sure we're turning clockwise with our planet, locking counterclockwise. All right, lube her case up really well. Lube her support up really well. Okay, we have three bolts on each support that look like this. We have to line up the holes because that goes in through the case and holds this in place. I'm just going to put one in, in place on each support until we get everything built. Feed ports go to the bottom and then you're just going to have to look through and make sure that this is lined up. Nine sixteenths on those. Okay, make sure your snap ring is on there because, like I said, that's what holds your drum up off of the support. Put your rear clutch drum in. We got a steel clutch, two steels, and we're alternate that up to the pressure plate. You notice I only replaced the low reverse, that's because these others have been replaced, they're new but the low reverse were burnt. Uh, you'll notice that there was spots on the steels, but they were not that bad. The steels were not warped, so they will work. You can see the number on our plate. There's different thicknesses of the plates for your clearance. Okay. 
make sure our bearings are still on there. Put the front drum on. When the drum is down, there'll be just a little bit of a gap between the drum or the two drums. Go ahead and lube up our support again in our case. Okay, we've got two ports over here, single port over here, two and single. in the wrong direction. Make sure our bearings on their ring gear. Make sure our bearings on our planet. And actually, I guess I should put my snap ring in. You got the snap ring with the tips that are bent up. It goes this way. Tips are in these opening right here. All right, steel and clutch alternation all the way up. Snap ring again. Lube up our case. Lube up our pump. gasket so we can read the F. And line up our ports.
That's our pump bolts. little dab of silicone. You probably want to check your end clearance before you do this part of it. That way you don't make a mess. Okay. That's perfect. short bolts seventeen millimeters you need two longer bolts to up here in the front Okay, I'm not going to try to pick this one up myself today. I hurt my shoulder yesterday, so I'm going to get some help. i got to change batteries in the camera and change camera angles. So uh, we have to have the fan on after that because the radio will be playing. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, put a little thread sealant on each of the bolts that hold the center support in.
wrench is getting a little worn out. screwdriver and I just get up in there and pop my seal out of course this one's wanting to be difficult because we're on camera Also had water in it, so that does not help matters any. It tends to make this rubber glue to aluminum. There we go. some grease and grease that up all around and start that down and get your pocket screwdriver kind of work it around that little ridge right there so it starts in there And just take a socket and it is a whole hell of a lot better than taking that whole linkage out. Probably going to have to turn this again.
Now come on now. Okay, do the same thing for that leaper still. And of course they only gave one lever seal in the kit. Luckily I have another. Put your linkage on, 12 millimeter nut. Another 12 millimeter nut. Okay, if you want to take the, the linkage out, this little collar right here, you gotta spin it around. You're actually probably gonna be spinning it back this way. It's staked in place. Spin it back, there's a, a roll pin in here. You drive it through this collar, it's gonna destroy the collar. I just leave the collar off when I used to do it that way, but I don't. I'm not going to go through all that work, but that's how you do it if you want to uh, get that out. Once that pins out, then your shaft will slide out. You can put your seals in, slide your shaft back in. I just do it this way. Okay, we got rubber seals. have this uh, detent 
and right here. Goes behind that sprag, and then we got to push this over. Let's see what's going to be the best way to do this. Maybe. Maybe I should start the boat. And then push that over. Yeah, that's the ticket. Eighty four inch pounds on the ten. Okay. Got o rings on all of these accumulators. We got two, 2.512, 813, Two point four eight eight point nine seven six point one four six one point one five seven point four two seven point oh eight six Three point one three eight point eight four four point one one four. This one here, you're not gonna be able to get out of there. Uh, what you're gonna do if it's broken? Um, this is not even gonna be anywhere near accurate. Four six zero point three four nine point oh four three o ring on the wiring harness. Ten millimeter that holds that into the case. O ring on here. Gotta hook our cable into there. Oh, come on now. Kinda hard to hold this over. Okay. 
hook it into there. It's got to ride that through there. Our manual valve. This part right here has to go into there. Once I get this on there, I get the bolts in the right spot so we can measure them. I'll be back. Here. 1.833, 1.986, 1.646, this one's the same, 1.464, yeah, and this one's the same, and these two back here are the same. These six right here are 2.457. This one over here, 1.092. Mm -hmm. All right, battery died. So, uh, <clears throat> gotta remove that over. Didn't notice that. That's what I was talking about before. You make sure that's centered in there. Okay, need our gasket for filter. Our filter, we got three 10 millimeter bolts. They are all the same. One inch 990, they go over here. We got three eight millimeter bolts that are the same they're two inch 41 thousandths and we got four eight millimeters that are the same they're 663 thousandths shallow wall for that. And find my shallow wall.
Okay, we need our tube. Need to make sure that our roll pin is still inside that hole right there. We have our gas, I mean our plate, three 10 millimeters, they're all the same. 2.737, four eighths, there's 6.665. Okay, um, plug our solenoid in and put our wiring in the hole. I'm going to tighten this down. Um, I don't think you really need to see me put a pan on. Pan gasket, this comes with silicone. I've done both. Um, so the pan gasket goes on in our pan. These are the pan bolts. I gotta get them cleaned up. Um, once I get the pan on, I can see what kind of angle to do the back end back here. Okay, we'll see how this goes. I'll go ahead and loosen this back up. Sure your ceiling rings are on there. Do fit them up in the back of there and make sure that the gap is appropriate. Come on now. Here we go. All right, now we can tighten our governor down. Okay, we have a thick shim that goes on there. We have a snap ring. We want the short end of the taper up. These things get kind of deformed. You can just kind of beat them back into shape. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna have to turn this to where I can get to it. got entirely too much stuff on my bench. This part situation is really starting to upset me. Okay, now we need to uh, put our tail housing on and then we got another snap ring and shim that goes out here. Here's our gasket for it. I'm gonna put gasket sealer on this. I'm definitely gonna to have to turn this towards me so I can get all this on there. 
these two bolts go in the bottom. The two brackets go on the side. And then here's all the bolts for that. did forget to mention that park see I don't know if you can see it this park rod has to go in right there
gonna have the thin shim. And the short end of the taper out towards us again. should have showed it but I forgot there's a little notch over here is an oiling hole that's where this is gonna go I've already pressed my seal in uh, put a 3m weather strip adhesive on my seals if you can get the o-ring to stay in there that's great I'd put a little bit of grease to hold it You don't need much, just a couple dabs. I'm gonna go ahead and grease up my seal. When my transfer case goes in there, it's, it's a little slick. Line up your holes. Four twelve millimeters. Actually, five. I'm sorry. should be somewhere around 21 foot pounds the uh, tool guy never showed yesterday I don't know what was up with that I really needed them to come they never come when you really need them to over here. I don't know where I set it down. I'm going to have to find it. Over here. we got the cooler 9 fitting o-ring on here. Orient that in such a way where that's pointing up. Three quarters on that. O ring on our switch. Okay. millimeter that holds our throttle cable and I think that's backwards I think it should be that way and it should be right there
that should help keep from them breaking this again while they're moving it around. See if we can get it started. It's been all bent up. Okay, come on now. Okay, I just threw, threw that behind the table, so I gotta hunt that up. But you see where it goes. Uh, only thing left is a neutral switch. If it hasn't been taken on and off a bunch of times, you can just uh, put it back where it was. But there is a line right here that you line this up in neutral. So that's how you line that up. Put that on and we are done with, the, oh, my vent. I got a silicone, my vent in place and it's going to go right there. Just like so, get my wiring out the way. It should be wire tied up to the cable. It goes up over there in that area, but this should be pointing somewhere about, about that general vicinity. And our 12 millimeters go on our neutral switch there. 10 millimeter for the wiring. All right, that's it for this one. Okay, and a little bonus I'll give you here. On the neutral switches that I can take apart, a part, <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong, man. Can't talk today. I go ahead and I take them apart. And like on this one, it didn't have hardly anything left in here anymore. It was pretty much dry. So, I go in here and I polish up the contacts. You'll see how this one is just not quite right. I'm going to go polish on that some more and get that where it's all the way across, where it's going to make better contact. So let me go do that and then we'll be back. Okay, here we go. So down inside of here is a spring on each one of these. Um, I'm not going to take them out. I don't want to take a chance on losing one because I'm not going to have a spring. That is going to be like that. You can take them out and stretch them out a little bit if you want to. As long as they are springing up, they've got pretty good little spring to them. It should be okay. Get you some dielectric grease. Well, all right. I'm gonna lube up in there, especially where it's rubbing. seal and a lot of times once you take this rubber seal off it's going to expand out definitely try not to put any solvent on it it will definitely balloon out on you if it does and it doesn't want to fit down in there anymore i just find a spot and i cut it and like you're going to have to cut it probably in a corner because this is this is where it's not going to want to fit anymore to cut it in the corner and then bring it down to where it will fit slice off whatever extra there is now just put a dab of silicone right there and I put uh, dielectric grease on here I put it around the inside right here kind of helps keep water out of there uh, the seal that goes on here is not very good shape and I don't think I'm going to have a rubber washer here 
I'm going to have to send them down to the hardware store probably and get a rubber washer for this thing. Let's put you some dielectric grease on there. Vent hose is gonna going, going to go on here. A lot of times uh, some of these models, the vent hose is really going up in there so you may not be able to take it off and shove it up in there like we're going to do here. And I think I'm going to have to take it back off and shove it back up in there. Maybe not. Alright. There we go. We're going to shove this up inside the conduit here. Phillips head screws on most of these. You're gonna have to get super radical with getting these tight. All it's gonna do is make you strip out the heads when you try to take it apart. Okay, this conduit is coming apart and it goes down inside and you just pop these off right here and this will come out probably going to get a new piece of conduit because each time you just start once it starts doing that every time you start bending it it's going to just break again so i go find some conduit and i'll fix that up work it back and forth get all that lubed up in there and then this is where the seal goes there is another seal in there but there is a, a rubber seal that goes behind this plate and this plate has little fingers on it these little locking tabs face towards the top just like that right there come on get down in there just like that. This is our 7 8 nut. Uh, leave this loose until you get the neutral. Uh, got the wrong side. There is a right side and the wrong side. It, you can't not put it on there right. All right, because it's gonna. This piece right here is gonna pinch down on this and lock it down to the shaft. So leave that loose until you get your neutral switch lined up. Once you get it lined up, tighten your bolts down, then tighten this down. Okay, that's uh, it.